to the Tesla Semi Stalker channel, and I hope you enjoyed that intro with the um, Tesla Semi going up the Donner Pass grade. Um, today, I want to talk about the different Tesla versions and um, also talk about the trailers that Tesla uses. And what, when we're talking about Tesla, there's two distinct divisions. The, there's a the Tesla production that uses Tesla Semis to deliver battery packs and drive units from Giga Nevada to Fremont. Um, and that is separate from Tesla engineering, which, which um, it has the um, task of putting as many miles on these Tesla semis as they can. What we're looking at here is a, a sample of the um, long range version of the Tesla semi. The, te that, the long range version is um, a three pack, 900 kilowatt configuration. And the standard range is a two pack, 600 kilowatt configuration. In this shot, you can see a long range version in the bottom left, two um, what I believe are test bed versions, the ones with the black fairings. I've never actually seen them on the highway and I believe they use these to um, test out um, new uh, inverters, possibly new self-driving software, bus bars. Um, I don't actually see these ever out on the highway. You also see a, a Frito-Lay um, Tesla Semi that, that was delivered to PepsiCo. As we scan over, you'll notice that all, most of the trailers we've looked at so far are the Utility 4000DX composite trailer built by um, Utility and sort of the state-of-the-art in dry van trailers. The one in the bottom shot here, though, that I didn't really get, that we don't really get a great look at. Hopefully, we'll see it better coming up. This is a Kentucky car trailer, very expensive, climate controlled. Um, I, the research I did was that a ten-year-old one cost seventy thousand. A new one probably cost about one hundred fifty thousand or more. All I could see was, please call for pricing. Here we go. We get three long-range Tesla semis and then the short-range Tesla semi, and you can clearly see the difference in length and the size of the fairing. We, we're we're uh, flying over a bunch of the um, utility DX um, 4000 DX composite trailers, which seems to be uh, the universally the trailer employed by Tesla Semi uh, engineering um, program. Here's two long range versions, as you can tell by the longer uh, wheelbase and the longer frame to accommodate three battery packs. Um, and again, that's 900 kilowatt hours. That's finally been confirmed. Um, a lot of speculation there, but I think it was Pepsi that finally confirmed what, what the actual uh, size of the, of the battery is. And with a, with a thousand megawatt, with, the, with a megawatt charger, um, everything checks out. One thing I've heard is that the charge curve for these Tesla semis is phenomenal, that it doesn't drop off the way we would expect or the way we see in our own Tesla cars. They've somehow, because of the three battery packs are separate, perhaps they um, each have a, a different um, uh, configuration or they're, they're charged independently and not together. And that results in a much lower uh, drop off on that charge curve, uh, which is why they're able to achieve, achieve such incredibly quick uh, charge times. Um, about in a second here, we're going to see uh, the Tesla semi engineering uh, driver coming back from here. He is. He's coming back from his morning run based on the timing. This driver just is returning from his morning run to Auburn, California and back, which involved going up and down the uh, Sierras mountains and um, some significant grades. And the interesting thing about it is not only is there obviously some severe grades going up the Donner Pass summit, but in addition, there's some significant downgrades where there's tr brake trailer, trailer brake checks areas and uh, occasional uh, serious problems with uh, overheated brakes. The Tesla Semi, on the other hand, regens. Um, th this kind of mass going down, and they, they're, they're, lo they're carrying 80 to 81,000, sometimes pushing the 82,000 combined gross vehicle weight rating max that is afforded to an EV semi. 
This driver just came back. He's going to do a checkout, take a break, and then I believe he will make another run uh, down to the uh, roundabout, Silver Springs roundabout, come back, go up to the Gigafactory, charge, and then um, make a run and make one more run over to um, Carson City uh, in that area and then come back and that pretty much completes his uh, 12 hour shift. Then he'll he'll uh, hook, hook the Tesla semi up to the Omega Charger and the night shift will come and they'll do it all over again. Two shifts, probably two to three vehicles, Tesla semis running, running the same route day after day, six days a week, one day off, and the point is, is they want to stay ahead of the pe- Tesla Pep- the Pepsi semis um, in mileage, and in order to uh, uncover any issues before Pepsi does, and then they'll remediate them, apply those fixes to Tesla, and um, I mean to the Pepsi fleet, and prevent Pepsi from having um, any issues. And here he is, the um, here he is, the same. This is the same time frame. And he uh, he's pulled in. He, he does. He's done his walk around. Now he's, he's gone inside. Maybe got a refreshment. And now he's coming out to um, to probably drive up, drive up, like I said, over to the uh, Sierra Springs roundabout. There you go. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed the um, information.